At this point, we've seen a number of different imperfections or aberrations that can come from an image. We've seen depth of focus, where we're not necessarily in focus everywhere throughout the scene. We've seen motion blur, if you have a long exposure or a long shutter, we're going to, things that are moving are going to be smeared. We've seen uh, noise, if you have a high sensitivity, you're going to have a noisier image. And we've seen chromatic aberrations that are no fault of the camera, and there's nothing you can do about it. They have to do with Snell's law and the way the light bends. And now what we're going to do is just look at a few more of these um, and round out the things we have to worry about just during the imaging process and before we start really trying to reason about images and the world that they are recording. So the, the next one of these is so-called lens distortion. Now, in earlier, when we went from a pinhole camera to a, uh, a lens, we were assuming what's called a thin lens model. And the only the thing that the thin lens really introduced that was problematic for us was depth of focus, that not everything was imaged in focus. Now, in reality, the lenses in modern cameras um, are not quite thin lenses. They actually have um, some thickness to them, and they introduce themselves some distortion. So, for example, this is the simplest possible distortion model called a single parameter thick lens lens distortion model. So let's first talk about these equations. So x and y here are my uh, x and y points on an image corresponding to an undistorted image, right? And x hat, y hat are going to be where those pixels move to after they are distorted. And you can see here that, for example, x hat is equal to x, the undistorted pixel location, times 1 plus kappa r squared. r squared is just the distance of each point relative to the center of the image. This is assuming that the center of the image is 0, 0. So r is just the square root of x squared plus y squared, just the distance. Think radial distance. And of course, y hat is y times 1 plus kappa r squared. OK, so first of all, what happens if kappa is 0? Well, if kappa is 0, then what's going to happen is x hat is going to be equal to x, because this whole term just boils down to a 1. So that means when kappa is 0, as you're seeing um, over here, there's no distortion. So notice this image has superimposed atop of it a grid. Now, what happens when, in this case, for example, kappa is greater than 0? Well, what's going to happen is that x, hat, x tilde and y tilde are going to increase proportional to their distance. So you're getting this sort of what's called pin cushion distortion. And so the grid is being yanked proportional to the distance from the center. And then over here, what's going to happen when kappa is less than 0, our things are going to move towards the center, but proportional to the distance. And you get this barrel distortion. So it's as if you're, you've moved too close to the person and it's getting distorted. Now, what's nice about this model is that it's a one-parameter model, um, kappa. And if you have things that you know to be rectilinear in the image, um, lines on the wall, uh, tiles on the floor, well, then you can estimate that lens distortion by finding the parameter that straightens lines. Now, the drawback of this is it's not quite the perfect model for all possible lens distortions, but in most cases, this is a pretty good first approximation. Um, and if you have significant distortion, which typically comes from very short focal length, fisheye lens are the extreme version of that, you're going to want to remove uh, lens distortion before you do any type of geometric reasoning, because the basic imaging model that we assumed earlier on, perspective projection, assumes that straight lines in the world image to straight lines in the image. And when you have lens distortion, that is not true, and the entire perspective projection model breaks down, and then everything that follows that also breaks down. So if you have lens distortion, not that common in things like mobile devices because they have two pretty simple um, optics, but in more sophisticated imaging devices, you have to deal with lens distortion. And in fact, let's do an exercise to do that because it's a good exercise in manipulating images. Um, and I'm going to, in this case, give you some scaffolding code because it's a little bit more involved exercise. So I'm going to ask you to please write some code to remove lens distortion from an image. And I'm going to tell you how much lens distortion. I'm not going to ask you to estimate that. But once I tell you the distortion, let's see how to do that. 
So let me give you some scaffolding code to begin with. So I'm going to I'm going to bring in um, some matplotlib. I turned off uh, and I'm bringing in from uh, warping um, uh, some functions. That's what's going to do the interpolation or the removal of the lens distortion for us. So first things first, uh, um, I'm going to import an image of, of, of me that has been distorted. Um, I'm going to grab the image size and I'm going to find the middle of the image. And the reason I need the middle of the image is remember, I'm going to compute the distance of every pixel relative to the center of the image. Um, and so I'm going to compute uh, the midpoint right here um, of the, the maximum X and Y dim. Okay, now um, I'm going to create a sampling lattice of the points in the distorted image. And then I'm going to create a new sampling lattice of the points in the undistorted image, and then I'm going to warp between those. Okay, so let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to create this gridify is going to create all the x, y coordinates associated with an image, and that's going to be the so-called destination grid. That's where I want to get to. Now your job is to generate the source grid that tells me in the distorted image where are the coordinates. Okay, so a uh, couple more things and I'll tell you what I mean by that. Um, here is the amount of lens distortion. Notice how small it is. It's 0 0.000005. And the reason why it's so small is because these image coordinates are not in normalized units between 0 and 1. They're in units of pixels. And so the distortion seems to be very, very small, but it's quite large because these things are still moving by a few pixels. Okay, So I'm going to center my destination grid. And what I want you to do here is to define the source grid. Okay, so let me tell you what I mean by that. This is a, a simplified version of my destination grid. And what it is, is the x, y coordinates. So the first uh, column is x, y, x, y, x, y for the first row of the image, and then x, y, x, y, x, y for the second row of the image, and so on and so forth. So imagine taking this little image right here that is, say, what is this, five by five. And each point here has an x, y coordinate associated with it. Yeah? So first coordinate, uh, zero, let's call it 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, and then 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5. That's what I'm doing right here, but I'm doing it for the full resolution image. And this has been sampled quite a bit. You're going to do it with a sampling of 100, not with the small thing. So this is what the destination is. This is a, what's called a rectilinear image. Um, I've got the coordinates. And now what you have to do is with that value of kappa that I've already given you um, right here, you have to tell me what is the lattice on the distorted image, which is simply how much have those things moved. And then I'm going to take an image on that distorted lattice and move it onto this undistorted lattice. And that will remove the distortion. So your job right here in the code is to define the distorted coordinates using the model that I showed you before, x tilde is equal to x times 1 plus kappa r squared, where r squared is the square root of the distance to the center of the image. And then you can use this little code snippet down here that will do the um, uh, 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 removal of the distortion, and you will remove uh, the, 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 the lens distortion. All right, go ahead and give it a try, and then we'll go through the solution when I get back. All right, this one's a little bit trickier. Not so much the code. You can see the code is actually relatively straightforward, but conceptually, um, what you're doing is you're now manipulating not the image pixels directly, but the coordinates of the image pixels. And so what I've done here is I'm going to grab the x and the y coordinate out of the destination. Um, I'm going to compute r squared, so this is the square root of the square root of x plus y, and then I'm going to push it through the model. So the new, the source coordinate is equal to x times 1 plus kappa r squared. The y coordinate is equal to y times 1 plus kappa r squared. And so now the source um, data structure here is these distorted coordinates that correspond to the distorted image. And now what I want to do is move those back to the undistorted in the destination. And that's what the code below is going to do. And so here is the um, uh, code for doing that. Um, we're going to do what's called the grid to mesh. We're going to do the image transform. That's the actual warping. And then I go ahead and do the display. 
And what you're seeing here is the distorted image. Uh, and you can see it's distorted. My head looks a little weird to me. It may not look weird to you. But what you can see in the background is those lines are a little curved, particularly the one going up against the wall. And now look all the way over here. Those straight lines have, are now straight. And you can see, see the black around the border of the image? That's where I brought the image in to remove the distortion. And now there's just no content out there because this was an initially a pin cushion distortion. And when I push the pixels back in, well, there was nothing there to fill in, okay? So the details of how this code works exactly is not as quite as important, although I would like you to have figured it out or at least figured it out once I've given it to you. But what is important here is this notion of lens distortion. And it is particularly important, and it will be particularly important when we start to try to reason about the geometric world. If the image we are working from does not represent the physical world, we have almost no chance of reasoning about the physical world. And so the reason we've gone through this exercise of understanding the imaging pipeline and the distortions and the imperfections is that we have to know in our recorded image what is representing the world and what is an artifact of the imaging process.